Well, welcome to a bait maker's diary. You join me on a freezing cold day, although in this office, it's actually probably about 25 degrees. I've cranked the fire up. I've been so, so cold over the last few weeks because it felt like I've always, I've just been outside, outside doing stuff, whether that's in waders, whether it's at the factory composing base mixes. It's just been a very, very cold time. So in the office here, I've had a bit of a clear out. And while I was doing that, I found an old folder that I uh, made when I was probably about 16, and that's Oakstone Fishing Lake. Now, this is gonna be very relevant, and it's gonna weave itself in and out of the diary pieces. And over the, crikey, next few years, because it is a long task, I plan to put this dream that I had when I was, say, 16 or so, into reality. And that was creating my own lakes, water, habitat, here where I now reside at the farm. So I'm really, really excited to, to delve into this because there's lots and lots of good stuff. There's a business plan in there. It's, I talked about stock of fish, what I was trying to achieve. So it's a, it's a great to reminisce and go back to uh, a 16 year old uh, Mark Bryant, uh, thinking about what he wanted to achieve back then to what I want to achieve now. So we're gonna look at that in a bit more depth. Um, but on taking on the farm here, we actually inherited a couple of ponds that were already here and they had carp in them. And I was really, really excited to find out what carp they were and try to trace back. And it's really difficult. There are some original scaly fish here on the farm in the Cotswolds, which I didn't know nothing about. And it looks like there was an introduction of some other fish as well, which potentially were from Horseshoe or Orchid Lake. Um, but I don't know. And it's quite exciting not to know as well. So I'm going to take you back four weeks ago to when I finally got to see exactly what was in the ponds. And this involves sort of a netting process that didn't really go according to plan. Being, uh, being quite new to it, it's my first ever attempt at netting, so there's a few trials and tribulations, but let's go back four weeks ago uh, to when we finally got a chance to glimpse what was in the ponds. Well, the first step in seeing what was in the ponds was actually to go through the process of becoming a fish farmer. It's really important to me that in able to give these fish away uh, and for future developments on the farm that I go through the process and be accredited as a fish farmer. And I'm glad to say after going through quite a lengthy process that we've been given the official title and Cotswold Carp has been born. And what this means is uh, I'm, no, I'm not looking to compete or to uh, with, with the major sort of fish farm players. Uh, this is a very, very small scale basically the sole intention is to create my own stock for the hopefully the lakes here that are going to be developed um, but it gives me the option because if you have too many carp and of course these carp breed very very well as anyone would uh, tell you that we're going to have surplus fish left over and those surplus fish um, it'd be nice to be able to give those away and in some instances sort of in the future probably sell a few as well just to fund the, the fish farm side of things um, so as I mentioned before, I'm not looking to do this on a big scale. There's already guys like uh, VS Fisheries and um, Mark Simmons um, who produce some fantastic carp around the country and uh, you know, they're doing it on a much, much bigger scale. But all I wanted to do was create something very, very small here. So anyway, that's all been born. And off the back of that, I've now purchased my own nets. Same net, crikey, that was expensive. <sighs> um, and also set up some holding tanks um, pumps, aeration, all the all the usual paraphernalia that goes along with, um, with keeping fish alive on a, on a fish farm, I suppose. So that was a, an interesting process. I had to set out my bio, biosecurity measures plan as well for the farm to stop the spread of any potential de disease or disease coming in. Obviously you had the fish health checked. Um, so yeah, whole, whole process involved there. But um, this was the whole sole intention was to give some of these fish away because I, I, what I didn't know was how many fish were going to come out of the pond and I was absolutely shocked. And this leads me on to giving them to a, a fishery called Bitterwell Lake which is in uh, Bristol. And it's very very dear to my heart and to Mike uh, who's uh, alongside me who we fished this as a young boy and it's why the first lake that I ever started carp fishing so that holds a very very special place. and. I thought what would be a nice idea was to actually give or donate that some excess carp from the ponds to Bitterwell Lake because it's a, it's a great community lake um, run by Paul Isaacs. Uh, he's only took it on recently in the last sort of three years. He's done a tremendous amount of work down at Bitterwell Lake 
Um, and it's where a lot of people in the Bristol area start their carp fishing, or it's certainly where someone would visit when they're very, very young in the carp fishing, sort of from that sort of side of things. So uh, with that in mind, I wanted to get everything together and to, to net the lake and to donate these fish down to Bitterwell. Um, so with that in mind, one cold, freezing cold day, I went down there with, uh, with Mike and my little girl and Claire to, uh, to sweep the lake and see what we got. And we managed to catch a few fish, not loads, but it was great to see some carp um, that I didn't even expect were in there. Well, that was a baptism. First day netting and I must say it wasn't that successful. Uh, it was good fun, it was good fun. We had um, obviously little Darcy down with us and she loves seeing the fish. So we did manage to catch a couple of the bigger fish in there. Ready? Put your hands oh, up. Gentle, gentle, that's it. That's Show it. the camera. That's it, nice and gentle. Yeah, look at that one. <laughs> well done. Good girl. Well held, Darcy. That's it. That's it, go back to daddy. I'll put it back to his home. Um, and she loves seeing those. So I'm trying to get her into a bit of fishing and any excuse for her to hold a fish or touch them. She loves it, which is which is fantastic to see. But we, had, I knew there was lots of carp in there. When I'm talking lots of carp, from the summer, we were catching so many on the float, you know, all between sort of an inch and up to sort of six inches. There just had to be hundreds, if not thousands of fish somewhere in the lake. And after a couple of sweeps that first day, catching relatively little in comparison to what was in the lake. I was scratching my head. I was, I was thinking, what, how are they getting, is my netting technique not up to scratch? Are they getting out? I, I didn't know and it was really frustrating, but coming away from sort of day one, we, we sort of set a bit of a plan then off the back of that. I'm thinking we need to sort of go back to the drawing board a little bit. So yeah, we didn't catch that many that day. It gave us a little glimpse, um, but we had to set a, a date really for the guys for a bit of while to come up and collect fish and my wor my biggest worry was was going to set this date they were going to go to all the all the tr uh, trouble of setting up tanks and booking days off work for the people trying to help as well and we were going to have very little to show for it so after that day one i had to go back to the drawing board and i suppose the light bulb moment come with a um a, a trip down to see my friend friend ben at bp milling who was um uh, dropping the levels in one of his lake to net the fish out because he was donating some of these carp to the Cotswold, a Cotswold lake as well. So I thought it was a great opportunity to nip down with him uh, to see, to watch him like a hawk, to see what he was up to, um, get some tips off him for netting and that's exactly what I did. I'm, I'm glad to say not only did I pick up a few tips on the way to uh, lay the net out, that's really important, but also dropping the water level seemed to be the key component to stop the fish getting up underneath the bank. So armed with that information, we came back and set about setting a date and getting a pump up to get the level down a little bit. Well, day two was an early start, fueled by loads of coffee and probably on the coldest day of the year. Now, yeah, I picked the coldest day, or I picked a cold day to move fish because the fish are gonna be more lethargic. Uh, and also when you're transporting them, you've got less worries of oxygen. As, as we've sort of talked about on the previous diaries, the cold water, the, the colder the water, the more oxygen it holds. So you've got less, less worries with transportation of fish. So with that in mind, we sat down, crunched through the frost, broken some of the ice, in the uh, in the margins and um, had the net sort of out already from the night before which was like frozen solid to the ground almost and uh, set about looking at trying to sort of get a, get a first sweep in had the pump going um, you know that was that was absolutely integral to everything to drop the water levels down so we're reducing the volume of water and trying to sort of funnel the fish into one area but while that was, um, it wasn't going down as quickly as I'd like because we had a, there's actually two little inlets that come into the pond. So as quickly as we was pumping it out, there was some water coming in and we did have some rain a few days before. So it wasn't going down as quickly as we'd like. So I thought, in because we were there sort of set up, let's go round and have another sweep with the net. So we did that, took it all the way round in the freezing cold weather, but then, you know, 
literally 20 minutes in the pond and my toes were absolutely frozen. But getting the net round and doing that first week, which is really hard work with two of you, um, pulling the net in, we had a few fish again, but nothing to write home about. It was probably about 25 carp in there. So a little disappointing, but great to see some lovely fish, all sorts of scale patterns and sizes. So we got the net set up again, um, and I'm just scratching my head thinking, where are these carp? Because I can't figure out for the life of me where these carp have gone, because they have to be in this vicinity of water, and are we just missing them with the net? Can't be. So I thought, right, we need to do another sweep of the another sweep of the lake. So by this time, the water level's going down, and there's like a there's like a shelf, if you like, round the margin. It's a clay lake. And there's a shelf and at the time there was probably about six inches of water on this shelf shelf and it was going back and then the bank the bank was undercut in a few places and a few little bramble bushes that hung over but nowhere where you'd think it would hide hide any carp now it'd be in six inches of water so i thought right this time we've gone so we went around the net again i was kicking the margins as i went round um, and i managed to get all the way around and then started dragging the net in and this time it felt a little bit heavier so i'm thinking here we go we're gonna have some carp here and we've got it to the same position and where it's felt heavy was it's pulling a lot of silt up off the bottom which is always good for the, for the lead lines i suppose to to dig in but again it was a very very disappointing outcome it was a by that time i was thinking now this is this is turning into a bit of a disaster because the guys from Bitwell Lake were coming up the day after, so the next day, um, and they were coming up, they booked time off work, got all the tanks, got all the oxygen, everything like that. So it was a proper process for them just to just to be available for that day. And um, I, I just thinking, we're just not getting any carp here. We'd literally probably had about 70 carp, small ones at that as well, and a few bigger ones that we put up into you know, the fish house or put into a little swimming pool. Um, which is very commonplace for, for fish farmers to have these little swimming pool areas filled sort of very um, with shallow bit of water lots of oxygen going through the water there so they're perfectly safe but we literally had about sort of 70 very small carp and a couple of big ones it was just embarrassing so um, we were starting to panic really starting to panic but the water level was dropping and that became the key element in the whole process Well, with under 24 hours to go until these fish would be collected, it was pretty embarrassing. I only had about sort of probably six or seven pound of carp to give to give the lake, uh, give Bitterwell Lake. So with that in mind, we started to do another sweep and this is where everything changed. Now, me and Mike started to walk down the margin and Mike saw a swirl right tight under the bank. And I mean under the bank, this was in six inches of water and these fish must have been sort of so tight, almost backs out of the water right under the bank. So we, got, we had a hand net with us and we thought we'd just give it a little scoop and see if we can catch this carp that we saw. As we've scooped up the marginal shelf, right up in six inches of water, the water has exploded and there was literally hundreds of carp, hundreds of carp right up underneath the margin in a tiny, tiny shallow bit of water, all the way around, it looked like all the way around the pond as well. And I kick myself now because you know, when carp are stressed and they're being hunted for, and in, in the, I can think of many instances in the winter, the fish can tuck themselves away in the undercuts of the bank and, and be, um, you just wouldn't imagine there'd be any carp there. So with that in mind, we started then sweeping the margins. We put the same net down, didn't even bother with that. We literally had the hand net and we were scooping, walking five yards, scooping up the margin in six inches of water. And we were catching so many carp. Here they all were little cheeky buggers were just out of the way of the net all the time we would just been netting just in front of them by literally a yard or two and they were so quiet um would have gotten away of it if we hadn't what well, mike hadn't spotted the little swirl so we was then netting loads of carp every sweep would bring a net full of carp of about sort of 10 pound of fish so we were quickly then taking them back transporting them up to the fish house come back re repeating and it, over the course of an hour just before it got too dark we probably filled up that net about 15 or 20 times. So going into the final morning, when the final sweep with the water level now gonna be, you know, we left the pump on pretty much all night. I was there maintaining it up until 12 o'clock at night before I went to bed. We can now drop the level down past that shelf importantly. So the final sweep the next day, I'm hoping was gonna bring a bumper haul 
and bring our tally up to uh, a few hundred pound a fish. Well, the last morning I was up bright and early making sure the pump was on four bore to get the last little bit of water out before the guys arrived. And now the water level was down below the shelf line where all the fish were hiding the day before. So now I knew whatever was in the lake had to be in the central area. And I thought, right, this is, you know, if we're gonna get them all, it's gonna be on this next sweep. So Paul turned up, um, Paul brought James, uh, his friend who were transporting the fish down, and also um, Paul brought his son as well, who uh, coincidentally had had to write, well, had to write into to the school to give him the day off from school to come and to do what he was gonna gonna do with the fish. So it was great to see a young lad getting involved and uh, really excited, and they all buzzing about obviously the fish that was already up in the fish house, seeing all those little ones and some bigger ones as well, which were gonna make their way down to his fishery. He was very excited and it was, uh, it was great to see. So with that in mind, we set about pulling the net off the, uh, off the frozen ground and getting it round for its final sweep, um, which, um, which by now we had we'd done this about three or four times. So we were not, not the pros or anything, but we sort of uh, knew sort of uh, the, the quickest and easiest way to ship the net out. There is a bit of a technique to it. We got the net round, started pulling the uh, the net in, um, nice and slowly, but very, very quickly it became evident there was a lot of fish in the back. As the fish bows out the back, you see the swirls and it gives you a sort of indication and pulling the net, you can feel how heavy it is as well. Um, when we got it in close to the bank, we had a huge haul of fish, much more than we anticipated and probably more than we caught the previous day, previous two days collectively. So bringing the, bringing the net up, we finally got it all staked out. We got all the, um, the metal pins in to hold the net above the water line so the fish can jump out. Um, brought up the, uh, the lead lines and it revealed lots and lots of fish, loads in fact. And there was all sorts of carp in there as well, which is really, really pleasing to see. There was some scaly fish, there was some plain fish, linears, commons, you name it. It was all in a melting pot. So it was a lovely, lovely way to uh, to uh, to see what what the lake actually had and what had in abundance was variety as well um, so bringing those fish out we we had to move quite quickly because by the time this was all done we're now edging into uh, into the afternoon and as you know in the winter you don't get a lot of light in the in the daylight hours so we got all the fish up to the fish house had a grade through had a look through them um, it was problematic trying to sort out the tanks because the pipe had actually frozen. It was that cold. That was how cold it was that day. But luckily, through a bit of a bit of perseverance, we got it going again. Managed to fill the tank and then started to grade the fish up in the fish house to see exactly what we had there. Well, there's a lot of fish, as I said, and we're just going through now, putting them all into the container, and then be on our way very, very shortly. But yeah, there's a, there's a load here, and from the uh, from the nightmare of yesterday to what is now, loads and loads of carp. There's absolutely hundreds here, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds. Fantastic. Right, got to crack on. And as I say, there was some mind-blowing fish, lovely fish, loads of little pearly scales, everything you'd wish for. And for these then to go to a fishery, um, I say the variety is the spice of life, and there was a whole different mix of different scale patterns there which was great to see so they all loaded up onto the uh, into the um, container air pump was on obviously the cold water helps but we knew we, we we had to sort of make hay because the light was, was dipping but we've got a certain time scale to get these fish back um, and Bristol was over an hour away particularly Bitterwell Lake it was gonna be an hour going through sort of uh, the back roads as well because it was all quite quite to avoid the traffic because by this time we're getting into sort of the, the rush hour if you like um, so with that in mind everything was loaded up and for me I couldn't wait to I wanted to go down and see these fish on their final journey so I hopped in my van because I hadn't been to Bitterwell in a long time so I hopped in my van and followed Paul out the gates Wow, this takes me back. I haven't been here for probably 30 years, I guess. Probably longer than that. And uh, amazing, you come straight through the door or straight through the gates here and straight away I'm transported back to when I fished here as a little boy. And I remember this, 
this oak here in particular because this was the hot swim for me and it used to be a big slope going all the way down there was no banks it was just a slope so it was challenging to uh, fish particularly when it was uh, wet but um yeah look how it's grown crikey in 30 years or 35 years almost have whistled past you know and uh I think what's gone on in my life and that that time and the fishery has obviously just ticked along as always and uh, it's great to great to see the level of work that's gone on here obviously it's been well maintained and looked after now and yeah I for one can't wait to see these fish go to uh, a very deserving home and um, I'm going to give a lot of the, the local anglers a lot of pleasure so the lights uh, starting to dwindle it's uh, it's cold damp and dreary but we're going to see some lovely fish go in and um, yeah, we'll try and get it all done before the light. So can't reminisce too much. We've got a bit of work to do, but for now, this is uh, this is taking me back. Nice. Oh, wow! That was an absolute mission. Well, good day. Loads of fish in, and. Uh, yeah, great to see all the kids involved as well. Lovely to see all those lovely, lovely fish, all shapes and sizes, like I said before. Um, but yeah, finally to get it in. It's such a relief to get them in because it's been such a long time in coming. Lots of planning, lots of effort from all sides, really, um, to get them down there and get them in there. But they're there. They're there and they're boshing and, and showing and all sorts. So I'm sure a lot of the Bristol anglers are going to enjoy them over the next uh, few years. But it's great to catch up with Paul as well. I we actually went over to his little hut. He's creating like a little, uh, well, it's like a, it's like a, a little man cave really. Uh, well, man cave. It's going to be. I know he's going to sell bits and pieces from it. But there's all sorts of little memorabilia in there, um, and he's uh, working hard to get some old historical stuff from bit of while years gone past. So great to see that. He's got a little fish board up there, which uh, me and Mike tried to guess every single fish. We had a bit of a bet on. Um, we got quite far, but I know that's going to be something he's going to. Um, get a sort of roll out at Bitterwell. I think if anyone can guess all the fish, then they um, they get a free day's fishing. So uh, yeah, swat up on all your coarse fish and sea fish as well. But great to spend a bit of time with Paul um, and uh, share a pint with him as well. Shared a Guinness with him and toasted the fish. And it's great to see them all hopefully now settling to home. I'll be keeping an eye on the social media because I know he's very active on Facebook, on the Bitterwell page. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to see how these fish uh, fish come through. But for now, it is dark, it is cold, I'm soaking wet, very damp. I'm going to whack the heater on, get home and have a, well, if my little girl's gone to bed, have a nice bath because I'm absolutely shattered. But yeah, great to see you. Let's get on the road because we've got a long journey. Well, going out to Bitterwell Lake in Bristol brought back loads of memories and I actually remembered I had quite a few photos back in the day of me fishing at Bitterwell and I managed to dig out a few and what's more this one has got an old recipe on and this was uh, a mix that I used to put together when I must have been probably 11 or 12, 13 maybe. I remember pestering my mum for all of her ingredients, uh, going in, ransacking what I could find. Um, but I come up with a mix here, which I'm guessing was my sort of foundations in bait making, really. Uh, very, very simple to put together um, and something that stood me in good stead, I suppose, as a youngster. And I caught a few fish on it as well. I'm not proclaiming this wasn't a, a, a mix that's going to set the world alight, but it, it's got a nice little flavour to it. It was visual. On the waters that I was fishing back then, they're very hungry waters anyway, being, being high stock. And yeah, I used to catch a couple, and I, nothing made me prouder than catching on my own bait. So I thought, well, why not? Let's uh, make up a bait today. And what's more, I'm going to set myself a challenge to see if I can catch a carp on it as well. Bit of a hard task at the moment. It's pretty cold, and we're not actually allowed to go fishing at the moment. But I know there's some better weather coming at some point. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try and catch one on one of these. So I've got my bits and pieces. I've nipped into a uh, local supermarket. I've picked up the, the two main ingredients, I suppose, that I made bait with back then. That was semolina and soya flour. Nothing extravagant, as I said. Um, so I've picked those bits and pieces up. I even managed to find some vanilla essence and some red food dyes, which I always used to steal off my mum. My mum used to go mad at me for nicking all her cake making bits and pieces. So I've managed to get them as well. So I've got my bits together. I'm going to flip the kettle on, boil some water and hand roll some little specials. Oh, 
Well, I remember way back when when I was doing this, then uh, it seems like a, a pound of bait would last forever. Absolutely ever, because you, you didn't use the volumes of bait back then, it was like 10 baits over the hook bait. So very simply, we used to, I used to knock up this, put the, uh, get the dry ingredients all mixed, and then um, a few eggs into the bowl. In fact, four egg, a four egg mix is typically what I used to make that last me ages. Um, and then I'd mix together all my mum's flavours. So I would delve into her kitchen and, and see what she had. And it, invariably it was a bit of vanilla essence and some red flavour, uh, red colouring I used to find. And uh, I used to find, try and find one of her oils as well and whack that in there. She used to go absolutely mad at me because everything was tainted red or smelt slightly fishy or um, of uh, sesame seed oil. So uh, yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, her favourite son at that point, but Yep, yeah, used to make it into a nice little paste and then comes the dirty part, it's getting your hands involved. That's it, stirring rains. That's it. That's it. Making fish bait, aren't we? So I used to try all sorts of stuff back then. And that's really, really where the experimentation came in because I'll take that simple 50-50 mix almost and then I'd add in crushed pellet, crushed peanuts, I'd add in different flavour profiles and it just starts the learning curve and that's what, it, that's what it's all about. But I remember rolling those baits, they used to be a bloody nightmare because uh, you'd end up trying to get a load of 15 millers and by the end of it you'd roll like 24 millers just to get all the mix done because it just it really sort of uh, took its toll on your hands but very easy to do we used to whack them all into a, a little a mum's uh, saucepan bring to the boil roughly about two minutes and lay them out on a on a kitchen towel or something and job done so yeah lovely way to uh, catch some fish and uh, yeah they caught me a few carp this one and um, nothing yeah doesn't set the world light as i said but it's uh a simple mix to experiment with and that was what it was all about back in the day is experimentation and learning. Well, that was an hour of my life, I'm not getting back. Crikey, I took ages just to roll one kilo but and you can see why people don't do this anymore because it's so labour intensive. There's so many companies out there making bait, why do you need to do this? But I suppose back then this was the enjoyment for me is making these little balls and learning as well and catching fish and uh, Make a, a memory that floods back is um, I remember I got so bored of rolling the little round balls. I used to make little pillows as well. So I used to chop them up, but and these were a little edge on some lakes. So uh, yeah, nice to uh, nice to reminisce. And do you know what? I'm going to put this into a bag, into the freezer, and wait for some more favourable favourable conditions than what we've got now because it's quite cold out there. But I'd love to catch one on here and just prove that my old bitterwell mix can still catch a carp or two. So I think that's what I'll do. Well, after seeing loads and loads of fish this winter from the old ponds and that, we now get to uh, this time of year and the winter is pretty much past now. And this is usually a time when I would um, get out and do loads of fishing because so I got more time at this time of year than any as the bait sort of industry sort of winds down a little bit but with um, all the circumstances of lockdown uh, only being able to fish days it's meant that I've, um, I've really struggled to try and get any time really and put any time together because most of my fishing in the winter historically is overnight in the day I've, I'm busy I've got lots of stuff to do so uh, yeah it's been a strange one but one thing I look forward to every year is about this time the birds are out, it's spring, or oh, it's early, early spring, just the first emergence of the old snow drops and everything is just starting to come to life and it's a, a lovely time of year and it gives me um, a few jobs to do here um, at the fishery um, and that's to maintain and, and clip some of the trees. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just in having a, having a wander around. A lot of these big willows were all planted from little strikes so essentially I would have I would have gone round the water park and I would, I would have literally snipped a little section like this, taken the branches off, and then that would be pushed into the ground. And essentially that has turned into that, and that's now 10 years old, I'd say, so when, when I first did it. So um, great to see them, but you, you have to clip and maintain them. You want to get all that energy going upwards and it's uh, quite a long process, but the end result is you get a beautiful tree like this 
and I've cut these branches in such a way, as you can see, that the anglers can climb up there and sit perched at the top, looking down at the fish coming underneath the willows. And there's nothing more romantic and beautiful than that, in my opinion. It's absolutely lovely, lovely tree. Great to have them around the fisheries, but the problem is when they get to this size, they need a bit of maintaining. So uh, there's a couple of trees down here I'm gonna, I'm gonna nip down and, um, and clip. So come and follow me. Oh, this spot. This is the spot. For the guys who have seen uh, a couple of the previous diary pieces back in the summer, I had them feeding like literally up at the shelf here, right in touch. There's loads of lilies that come up here, but obviously they're not here now being it's winter. It looks very different, but give it another six or seven weeks and uh, those pads would be up and I'm guessing the fish would be back in here. And uh, yeah, that was just caught literally with an hour. I had an hour to spare. Didn't have a lot of time. Oh, oh, oh. You're late. Um, and really that's probably going to set the tone for, um, for me this year. I've got um, lots of things happening on the horizon. I'm not going to get a load of time this year. Claire is actually um, pregnant um, and for guys who have watched previous back uh, episodes, unfortunately our last child that, we, uh, that Claire gave birth to, we had a stillborn um, at 37 weeks, so really long term. So it's been a, been a real difficult time for us to um, to, um, to, to look at her getting pregnant again, I suppose. There's a lot of, uh, um, a lot of worry and a lot of, uh, particularly um, from, uh, from, from me and, and for Claire, you know, to go through this whole process again. And uh, Claire's getting bigger now. She's due in a couple of months, uh, two or three months. Um, so um, that's all ticking around at the moment. So yeah, that's gonna change my fishing because we've got a really, really sort of uh, worrying time coming up. But you know, having coming out on days like this really sort of clears my head and uh, allows me to um, to get things in order, I suppose. You know, with what's coming. So um, yeah, it's great for for mental health and great to uh, be out in the in the great outdoors. But going back to time, I'm not going to get a lot of time this this year. So uh, a quick hour here and there is going to fundamentally change my fishing. Um, but I know that on these lakes and that, all you need is five, 10 minutes in the, in the right time. So it's going to be really interesting to sort of uh, plan my fishing around that. I can always trickle a bit of bait in. So who knows, we may get some opportunities. But um, for now, my job today is not to uh, put any bait in for any fish at the moment. It's to clip these willows. So the willow tree um, holds a lot of significance for me because that was what we called our, our little girl, unfortunately, who died. Um, and I've got actually a willow at home that was given to me when uh, at that time. So I'm gonna plant that around, hopefully one of the lakes that's gonna be constructed down on the farm in the not distant uh, future. Um, so that's gonna be planted there. But I always, uh, always smile and come down when I'm clipping these willows because it holds a lot of prominence for me. So this is the willow. Um, we've chosen for today is probably a couple more but this one in particular there's a lot of brambles which are sort of encroaching it and you can see like the others this has all been clipped so you can climb them so I'm going to take off some of the branches just to give it a bit of air and a bit of breathing space so uh, yeah although we've got a bit of work going on behind us the birds are out birds are singing a lovely time to be out and uh, with them snowdrops up here and I know we're six weeks away from um, from seeing those fish in the edges so yeah I can't wait but anyway let's get on with some work Well, as I alluded to when I was cutting the old willows, time is definitely not on my side for a few reasons. One being that Claire's going to be induced in the next few weeks um, and that's going to cut my time. But more to that as well, we've also, st we're standing in now what is going to be Baitworks new uh, unit. And when we uh, took this on, this was a shell, so nothing in here at all. So as you can imagine, we've had to put in racking, we've put in offices and a shop area which is lovely to have something that's going to be nice and clean and uh, be uh, somewhere anglers can come in and, and purchase the products so that's uh, really exciting and great to get that finally finished it's been taking ages we've had a, a team of guys working at Baitworks to get put it all together and there's lots and lots of moving parts but finally finally uh, we're nearly there now so uh, this is where I spend most of the time. It's moving product in and out uh, of the other unit and getting it over here. Also trying to juggle the business as well and keep that operational. So it's been a real, real challenge, but 
thankfully, we're not, we're not far away. We're literally um, a couple of weeks away. So, you know, that's curtailed my time, but because I'm going back and forth past the lakes, and of course, at the moment we're in lockdown, so we can only fish days, um, no night fishing allowed, but that actually plays into my hands a little bit because the lakes are very, very quiet because there's only a, a certain amount of local anglers that can fish them anyway. Um, I'm going past the lakes every single day and I just couldn't resist just popping a little bit of bait into uh, one or two of them and just keeping an eye on things. Um, and it's been tricky to, uh, to keep that momentum going, I suppose, because I'm in and out, but I can do it in the mornings, which is great. So a handful of bait into a couple of areas um, has been fantastic and it actually caught me a couple of fish. We had a lovely day. It's definitely a carp, <laughs> it's the main thing. Um, sun was out, first real sunny day we've had for a long time and I uh, managed to catch a couple of fish in quick succession, only fishing sort of not very far out but over a little area where I've been putting a little bit of bait and uh, just goes to show the power of it even at this year, a little bit of bait going into an area. So um, yeah, I've been doing that, been taking Darcy along with me as well. So that's been fun. Um, I'm making some little missions as we go and I drop off to play school. Our little mission is to go and feed the fish as well. Darcy, yeah. can you get the fish's breakfast? Yeah, it's so Where's the fish's breakfast? Go and find it. Just fine. Gonna be well done, Darcy. There we go. Can you take that in for the fish? Come on then, let's go. How about the magic stick, Darcy? A magic stick? The magic stick's there, look. Can you grab that? That's it, that's the magic stick. Yes. Um, um, I like it away. What's that? Uh, 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 magic stick make it away, Mummy. It makes the bait go in the lake, doesn't it, Darcy? Oh, yeah. Come on, let's get our boots on then. You ready? Ready. Come on then, let's go. And pull that down. <coughs> Not too tight. There we go. Right, let's go. We're here. You gonna feed the fishes again? Mm, okay. Good girl. Right, let's go. Let's get in because it's pretty cold this morning, isn't it? Well, that's everything for this morning, gone in. Everything, I say, it's only like 50, 100 baits, but it's just keeping uh, this area ticking over. Um, it's been quite cold, you can tell by the color of my nose, still a bit red, a bit cold this morning. Um, but we've got some really stormy weather coming in in the next uh, week or so. Big winds, uh, with, but they're westerly and southwesterly as well. So that's gonna hit straight into this bank, um, which is gonna be beneficial because it's gonna move fish and about. Daddy. There's definitely fish located all, all all around the pit here but uh, with that big strong wind coming that's going to push them around and a bit of bait going into this area uh, i'll be back in uh, probably next week now or a few days time certainly but for now i'm gonna get this little monster into uh into play school and we'll get, no. but we're gonna go have a chalky biscuit first aren't we no. yeah right right let's no. go let's go have a chalky biscuit and let's get out of here Oh, I tell you what, different conditions to uh, last time I was here. But after those couple of fish, I thought I had to get back out for a little go. And although we've got pretty stormy conditions at the moment, the temperature is nippy, there's a hell of a wind on. And uh, I just thought I'd uh, put the rod out for an hour, same sort of time as last time in the afternoon, um, chance of a bite. So one rod, the source needed. If they're here, they're here. I don't feel the need to put two out. So one rod, and I've just been trickling a little bit of bait into a, into a couple of areas. Um, yeah, see what happens. Mate, <laughs> got one. Oh man, 
Mate, that tore off. That tore off. I just, do you hear me? No, sorry, mate. I, <laughs> I was changing the batteries. It's not long. Mate, typical. But hey, we got one. Just about to uh, call it a day and uh, it rolls off. We got one. Wicked. Mate, it's plus trying to get us in. Right. Um, Books fell out in the net, mate. Ah, oh, Jesus. How's your luck? That I do. Yes. How about that? That'll do me, wouldn't it? Right. Cold enough? Oh, mate, it's freezing. Absolutely freezing. But just goes to show, mate, doesn't it? Crikey. Quick hour, that'll do. That'll do us. You've got a dewdrop on the end of your boots. <laughs> it's freezing. It's freezing. <laughs> nice. Right. Right then. I'm going to get out from underneath these trees because uh, it looks a bit treacherous today. It's a proper wind. Right, so I'm just going to transfer this fish out. What I do with all fish is to put them, rather than take them out of the net, that's what I find you can get the most damage fins and everything like that sort of not if they are, are pride they can get busted and even the fish thrashing about in the uh, in the mesh as well so always like to pop them into uh, into the sling check the old fins much more solid when we're lifting fish out when you're trying to walk with a net just prone to tripping over or something like that. with this got obviously bars and that it's a lot more secure Oh, this one's in uh, mint condition. There's hardly any leeches on this one, which is really interesting. So this one's been really active. And let's see, he's been having a little bit of a feed, a little bit of bait coming out there, not much. But yeah, he's been getting around upon this one, looks like. Lovely. Cleans a whistle. Ah, look at that. Even though it is still cold, today and there's a hell of a wind blowing it's, it is the spring or it feels like it's coming these dafts think it is lovely to be out on the bank regardless and just a quick little hour oh fantastic thank you mr carp well hopefully the uh, wind's not playing too much havoc with the old microphone but my nose feels like it's going to fall off, so I'm going to get this fish back and get on the toe so I ain't hanging around here. These trees look like they're going to come down at any point. Um, but hey, very enjoyable hour, that'll do. Well, I'm hijacking Mark's diary because uh, He's been a bit sneaky recently, as you've probably seen from his diary piece that we've been recording over the last couple of weeks. He's been put a handful of bait in every day, um, and he's managed to train these carp to a point where he's popping down and catching them within about half an hour. Um, but I know when the weather's good, like it is today, I've been in here building a desk, you know, really important things we need to get done before the big move. You know, there's lots of things that we need to get complete in the next couple of weeks. But Mark's being sidetracked by, uh, by doing the odd hour here and there in the afternoon on this pre-baited spot. Now I left him building all the racking in here because again we needed to get that done by the end of the week. And only when I shouted out I said uh, put the kettle on Mark. No answer. I've been tucked in here with the door shut and the radio on. Put the kettle on. No, no answer. I've come out and he's gone. He's nowhere to be seen. And uh, momentarily when I thought has he snuck out for another afternoon's fishing because I know what he's like. My phone's gone. Um, Mark Bryan. I'm like, where are you? And I can hear the birds singing in the background, so I know he's not out there peeled in that bloody racking where he should be. He's managed to sneak off, which is just round the corner to be fair, the lakes are only up the road. And um, not only has he managed to sneak off without me knowing, because I've had the radio on, he's already got one in the net. So um, I'm going to wrap it up for the day here. But I just want to say, I'm watching you Mark Bryan, because uh, yeah, we've got a lot to get done and you're getting sidetracked by going and doing a bit of fishing. But it's all good for the diary, don't know what he's got, but uh, he's got one and it's only taken him about, well I don't know how long he's gone, but 45 minutes, an hour? 
Let's go. Oh, nice one, Mike. Thanks for coming down. One of the perks of having you, I suppose, working at the factory, not only two minutes away. So, uh, yeah, Mike's popping on his way home, but we've got a cart, we've got another one. So, best get this one out and sort them out on the bank. Crikey, they're coming like buses at the moment. Check the old pecs. Well, here we go, another one. Whoa, look at this. Almost like peas in a pod. These, uh, these young fish have definitely woken up first. And it's no surprise, really, their metabolism kicks in a bit earlier than the big girls. But I'm sure there's a few big girls about, but we've just been a bit unlucky not to uh, connect with one. But this will do. This is uh, a 20 pounder. Lovely. Good condition, hardly any leeches. The odd one there. I'll get him off here, mate. There you go, look, a little leech. Not loads of leeches about on this one, but the odd one or two. So you can tell this fish has been active. And get rid of him. There you go, fella. But yeah, lovely one. I thought it was only right to have the picture with the, or the video with this one up against the old van. It's been quite integral to everything because I've chosen an area which is just in from the car park. Bit lazy, I know, but it's a good, got good winter form. And a little bit of bait applied in the mornings is paying dividends. And these fish are turning up in the afternoons. When that sun's tracking round and beating on this bank in the afternoon, these fellas are turning up and uh, I can almost set my watch by them between two and three o'clock on getting a bite. So I'm literally turning up at quarter to two, fishing till three. If I had a bite, I'm off. But invariably, one of these has gone off every single time. So yeah, lovely. Whoa. Thank you, Mr. Carp. It's, uh, it's Thursday now, and um, knowing what Mark Bryant's like, I've uh, I can see him out there. He's finished his uh, he's finished his lunch, so he's not going to get a sandwich, despite what he's going to say in a minute. And I can see him feeling about with the gear in the back of his car. I've seen him looking at the weather app all day, and he's still been building that racking. So I'm I bet you any money if I sneak out now, he's loaded his van up. Let's see what he's got to say for himself, because there'll be some classic Mark excuse. Let's have a look. There he is, he's down there in this van. Let's have a look. What are you doing? Mr. Bryant, what are you up to? What's up? What's up? I, um, I'm just checking in what you're up to. Have you finished that racking? Oh, I've done most of it, mate, to be fair. Yeah? What, what's, yeah. what are you actually doing here? I just thought you'd, uh, I yeah, I thought a you'd... Sandwich. A sandwich. Yeah, do you want know one? Mate, that is a feeble excuse because I've seen you having your sandwich about an hour ago in the kitchen. Well, how what's what's well, the next excuse? No, I'm going to get a drink and uh, back of Chris or something like that. So. Yeah, what, what time can I expect you back? About an hour. Yeah? About an hour. Oh, and the shop's two minutes down the road. <laughs> no, I'm going to eat my food maybe at the lake as well. Have All right. Well, you're going to have a little walk around just to... Uh, Stretch my legs, mate, do something, yeah. More importantly, how long is it going to be before you summons me to the lake to take some pictures? <laughs> <laughs> I can catch you out, mate. I, uh, I was in... I'm going to have some food. I'm going to sit next to the lake. I might flick a rod out for half an hour and see what happens. Oh, multitasking? Multitasking, but I'll be back with you. All right, all right, mate. I, um, I turned the camera on because I could hear you fidgeting about in the back of your van and I thought, he's definitely going fishing. I'll be back. Don't worry. The racket will be finished by the end of the day. All right, all right. I'll, um, I'll keep an eye on the phone and you never know. I might see you in a bit. All right, see you in a second. All right, mate. Tight lines. Oh dear. See, absolutely knew he was planning on going fishing. I could just see him fiddling about in the back of the van. So uh, I got loads of work and emails to catch up on, but 
I bet you any money I'll be going to the lake in about an hour's time. He's got these carp literally trained, almost I could, uh, yeah, almost predict when he's gonna get a take, but uh, good on him. He's, uh, he's in fine form and he's catching plenty. So, uh, right, let's get back to work. Oh, I was hedging my bets. So I was expecting this phone call. Let's see what happens. Oh, hang on. Hello, mate. Hello, Michael. I, uh, before you go any further, I've got you on loudspeaker, but I've also recorded oh. this phone call because uh, I was expecting good news. So I was hedging my bets that this <laughs> phone call was coming through. So, um, <laughs> what, what, what's happening? Well, mate, it is, uh, it is good news. I've got one in the net as we speak, mate. It's a good one as well. Bloody brilliant. Did you, did you manage to finish that sandwich that you so say bought? <laughs> no, still, still nibbling away through that one, mate. <laughs> mate, you literally, <laughs> you've literally been gone, well, from, from what I feel, it's like minutes. How long did that take? Well, it, is, it was minutes. Literally put the rod out within five minutes. It's, uh, it's gone rain, so um, nice when that happens, isn't it? So I'm keen to uh, get the rod back out. Um, but mate, if you could come down, that'd be great, because um, yeah, it's a lovely fish. No worries, mate. Let me wrap stuff up here and old Mike Dial, a photographer, will be down as soon as I can. <laughs> Good man. Thanks, mate. All right, mate. Well done. I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you a bit. Bye, mate. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye, bye. Bloody hell. I absolutely knew it. Fair play to him. It's, uh, yeah, he's literally got him trained. <laughs> so much for going to get that sandwich. Right, let's wrap stuff up here and uh, get on our way. <laughs> Oh, here he is. <laughs> that was worth sneaking off from work for then. Tell you what, it's uh, it's nice, isn't it? All come together, to be fair. And uh, yeah, um, it's all it's all gone right. Thank well, it's all been going right. But in terms of the big girls, then they've turned up in style today. Style today, and I've got probably oh, well, well over sixty pound in two slings there. You got two? Yeah, got two of them. Yeah. So add one, then obviously message yourself, um, and then uh, literally ten minutes later, the other one. Put the rod back out and it's gone again. Literally gone again, and that's um, that's a, that was a bigger fish. So, uh, mate, they've uh, they just turned up, which is amazing. So, I think we get our health sorted. I'll, I'll grab the mic off here because uh, I appreciate. Obviously, this is all a bit rushed now, is it? I've got, I've got to get off as well. I've only got an hour. <laughs> well, I've only had an hour, but I've got to go. Um, but mate, yeah, wicked. Brilliant. Brilliant. Let me get the mic uh, hooked up, mate, and we'll uh, we'll sort them out. Well, this is a beautiful, beautiful common. Look at that. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Beautiful fish. And look, look at this. That is my cremino. <laughs> really important, actually, to pick the right bait, particularly this time of year, something that goes straight through the fish. And uh, yeah, he's been enjoying that. There's the odd bit of hemp seed. So yeah, he's been enjoying that and uh, just goes to show, popping in a bit of bait, only sort of a little bit, only putting in 50, 50 baits to 100 baits. It's just enough just to keep these fish coming back and I can set my watch by them as I've mentioned before. And these fish are just turning up in the afternoons, coming in and I'm getting a bite straight away. And uh, yeah, today we've had two bites. Um, and what's more, the other one in the sling, uh, in the sack is even bigger. But. Let's not do this one any uh, a just justice. It's a lovely carp. Let's get him and have, get him up and have a look at him. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, lovely. I couldn't resist coming down to this swim because there's a, a set of daffodils to my left, and I've been watching them slowly emerge over the last uh, last few weeks, and they're in full bloom now. And it brought with it this cracker. Lovely, lovely common, beautiful. Thanks, mate. How's that? Thank you, Mr. Carp. You got a bit of strength for the next one? To find it from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's cold in there as well. That's proper cold. 
Right, who cares? Who cares? Right, let's get an next one, mate. Oh, a big old mirror. Oh, that's a kipper. <laughs> there we go. Whew. Wow. That's heavy fish. It should be heavy because it's a 35 pounder, or 35 eight actually. It's a lovely way. Look at that. Whew. It's a proper kipper, that one. Uh, got the old leeches again. I'll get them off in a minute. And look, look at this bait. So, one thing you would have noticed me, uh, one thing I do, and uh, I've mentioned it before, I check the vent on every single fish. So, just by rubbing down the vent, you can find out what the fish has been eating in the last sort of four hours, generally. So, if I just roll this down here, so it's only light pressure. There we go, look, just, just, yeah, there we go. So, there you go, there's our cremino. Is the various bits of seed and bits of hemp seed and everything there. So yeah, it's a good indicator this fish has been well on the feed, which is great. There we go. Fantastic sign. Right, my big fella, don't beat me up. Let's try. Well, there we go. Look at that. What a way to finish as well. A nice big plump 35 pounder. Oh. So glad these big girls have turned up. And do you know what? All things must come to an end. And my little uh, expedition for the last couple of weeks um, has climaxed in this fish, to be fair. This is, uh, this is a, a just reward for applying a bit of bait. Fishing the days only. There's a few people doing the odd days here, but obviously the pressure's not like it would be if everyone was out fishing. Um, but still a few people having a go and a few fish are getting caught, but lovely to get this one right at the end. With lockdown finishing in the next sort of couple of weeks, the lake's gonna get incredibly busy. I'm gonna be rolling loads and loads of bait. So uh, I'll end it here. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Well, I couldn't uh, get, let this one go about just uh, mentioning my lucky cardigan I've got on. This is my uh, blue cardi, which uh, has served me well over the years. It doesn't get a wash. In fact, the only time it gets a wash is now when, when it gets wet with, uh, with the fish I've caught. So uh, yeah, I thought I needed a bit of luck today and it certainly bought me that with a couple of big uns. So thank you, Mr. Cardigan. I'll put you back until next time. That'll do. There you go, Mr. Carp. Thank you very much. Lovely.